we are celebrating the solemnity of King of the Universe. I am Audrey Wilson. Our second lector is Liz Garneau, and our leader of song is Stephanie Spinoza. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. Next weekend, the Christmas giving trees will be available on the sides of the church so that our parishioners may assist the less fortunate at Christmas time. Gifts can be returned and placed around the Christmas trees until noontime on Sunday, December the 13th. As the construction work continues, we appreciate everyone's patience in their coming to and going from church. We greatly appreciate everyone putting their kneeler down leaving church today. Thank you. The pot of gold jackpot prize is $86,000. The next drawing will be on Monday evening at 7 p.m. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and also at the rectory. As the number of tickets being sold increases, volunteers are needed to assist with the drawing. If you are interested in assisting us, please come to the gym at 6.30 on Monday evening. No experience or long-term commitments are necessary. Thank you. Please stand. And let us pray the prayer for priestly vocations. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 721, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 721.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred. to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our last life. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep as a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who were blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? 
And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked? were ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs. He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. And so today we join the Universal Church in celebrating the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Universe. That term, King, is very grand and mighty as we acknowledge Jesus as King of the Universe, King of heaven and earth. But Jesus would not want us to treat him is royalty, but rather he commands that we honor him by caring for his people. And we are his people to care for one another. The scripture is very clear with regard to that. Listen again. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. That's the command. And when we do that, we please our God and King. When we fall short, when we fail, we disappoint Christ, terribly disappoint him. Listen again. Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. Jesus is very clear on what he expects from us. I think everyone here, or most people here, and those at home know what is meant by a love-hate relationship. When someone feels a very strong, loving attraction to a particular person, and yet at the same time resents that same person because of the way they're being treated, that is a love-hate relationship. Those feelings of love and hate toward the same person. In a certain sense, we have a love-hate relationship with this particular gospel passage. As we hear the words of this first part of the gospel, we feel the attraction. But as we go on and listen to the second part in the secret of our heart, we become a little fearful that love, hate. We're attracted, but we're afraid. Or hate hearing, the last part. In listening to the first part, we hear the king rewarding those who were gracious and good 
and helpful. And when we hear that, and compare ourselves to those people, we might feel pretty satisfied, comfortable. We've gone out of our way. We've helped people. We're good and gracious, helpful. And so we're comfortable with that. We love that part. We're part of it. But in the second part, as we hear it, we get a little uneasy. And the reason we're uneasy is because we know in our heart of hearts there have been times when maybe we missed opportunities to help someone. We saw them and we ignored them. And so we're not comfortable with that part. And then we begin to worry. Will our good deeds outweigh those missed opportunities? Today's gospel can be a wake-up call to all of us, myself included to take a good look at our lives as we're living them right now and see whether we are doing the most we can, the best we can, or are there missed opportunities in our heart of hearts we know it. I have shared on other occasions something that I have had to come to terms with For 40 years as a priest, I spend a lot of time visiting the sick in homes, hospitals, and nursing homes. And the older I become, and the aging population, I'm spending more and more time with the sick and the dying. And as I look back, over the years, when I go to visit someone or maybe a number of people in a hospital or nursing home, I go in and I look for those people. And I wonder over the years how often as I walk down one corridor, make a turn into another corridor, how many people am I passing along the way? How many people are sitting there in a nursing home, in a wheelchair, outside their room, maybe looking just for a glance, touch on their shoulder, a friendly word, or just a very simple acknowledgement that they're there? I couldn't count the number of people I've passed. But a few years ago, I became aware of this. And I would like to say that I've made great improvements. I'd like to say that, but I'm afraid I'm still falling. Sometimes just too busy, too much in a rush. And yes, it could take a full day to visit everyone along the way, and I know that. That's impossible to do but to stop for some of them, that would be on me. And I'm sure there are many other situations that are missed. Some time ago, Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta was giving a presentation, a talk, and she used this particular gospel passage from Matthew. And over and over again in her talk, She asked a recurring question. Do you know who your neighbors are? And she gave her talk and kept going back to that. And then she acknowledged that no one 
in that audience would ever be coming to India, to Calcutta, to assist her. But she said, do you know who your neighbors are? Do you know that they're waiting there for you to help them? And they can be in your own family, right next to you, in your parish, in your neighborhood. They're there. And then she said, you have to see all of them with the eyes of Jesus. And when you see with the eyes of Jesus, then you will respond. So my brothers and sisters, as we continue this liturgy, with this gospel in mind, feeling good about the things that we've done that have been good, but maybe being a little concerned or a lot concerned about the missed opportunities, let them be live in the present moment, keep our eyes open, and look with the eyes of Jesus and see our neighbor and respond to them. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again from in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Brothers and sisters, as members of God's kingdom, let us together offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may God continue to bless him in shepherding the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government and civic policy makers, may the Spirit, Holy Spirit lead them and following the loving example of Jesus, our King. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the hungry, the stranger, and the prisoner, 
May they be filled with the knowledge of God's love for them through our personal concern and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in this faith community, may Jesus, the Good Shepherd, lead us home when we go astray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ch St. Charles Seminary, as they continue their annual appeal, may the seminarians and administrators know the support of our parishioners. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, as we continue with the Next Generation Catholic Parish Initiative, may the Holy Spirit guide us as we establish our envisioning committee and soon begin to develop a parish pastoral plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially from among our St. Francis Cabrini Parish, may those, may those who are called respond with confidence and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For police officers, that they may be respected and that they, along with firefighters, first responders, military personnel, and those on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic may be protected from harm as they strive to serve others and for all veterans who have served our country and thus maintained our freedom as a nation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick of our community and all those who requested our prayers, including those reflected in the white intercessory book, may they be comforted by the caregiving and compassion of others. We especially pray for Nick Alvino Sr., Loretta Arant, L. Caruso, Nicholas Carrado, Joseph Dolan, Bob Evich, Mark Gervante, Patrick Galloway, Mary Lee Gerben, Dorothy Harris, Tom Holden, Shirley Kasparidis, Richard Kozlowski, Janet Law, Connor Scott Mull, Danica Maholland, John O'Callaghan, Locke Wynn, Carmelo, Carmela Olimpo, Jeff Rodunda, Lindsay Sturkey, Bob Sokowski, and Mary Jane Vatimo. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they soon rejoice in the eternal kingdom of God as we especially pray for Lorraine Baxter, John Prince, William Rafferty, Father William Small, and all those who have died as a result of violence and the coronavirus pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also commend to the Lord, Frank Colwer, that he too be received into the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, on this day when we celebrate your almighty kingship, we offer our prayers and ask, ask that you answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. Our offertory hymn is number 467, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, number 467. Whose goodness fails. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Frank, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Ours who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Since some of us are not able to physically receive Holy Communion, please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Our communion hymn is number 320, Bread of Life, number 320.
Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I thank all of you for being here at Mass and in church in person. I thank all those who are joining us from their home. It's always good to be able to celebrate the Eucharist with the community. I know that you who are here in church, as you come to church and leave over the last couple of weeks, you've seen the uh, progress that we're making with regard to the campus renovations. And for those who have not been able to see it, I would uh, ask you to go to our parish website and you'll see the video message from this past Thursday. Uh, we're very grateful to Hank Wajda, who is there on the Oregon plane today. Hank uh, did the drone pictures a couple weeks ago. And this past Thursday, he had his camera and walked through uh, the renovations and uh, then handed the uh, film video over to Karen David, who then gave a tour. Uh, she had her voice uh, overriding the pictures, and it's really uh, well done. And so it gives you a good idea of the progress that we're making. So if you haven't seen it yet, or you'd like to revisit it again, go to the parish website and you'll see that video. Very, very grateful. And I, I know Hank is here and whether Karen is here. There she, they're pointing to her. Let's give them a round of applause. So I say to Karen, you can run, but you cannot hide because everyone saw where you were. <laughs> so we're very, very grateful for all that uh, is being done here in the parish, and thank you to all of you and all our parishioners. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 723, to Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, number 723. To Jesus. 